Extra Electronics. This is a video about creating exposed copper PCB heat sinks for all of your parts that might need to have a little bit more thermal dissipation, but you don't necessarily want to go and bolt a heat sink on your design. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this and actually try and show what it looks like to create a, a big heat sink like this. So we open up our example project here. We're actually going to skip all of the part importing and such. And that's actually relevant because we actually are not going to be doing this heat sinking through the footprint uh, through the footprint editor. We could do that. So if we went into the footprint editor here and we opened up something like the let's see, we want uh libcms and then we want to look at the something big like a d squared pack or something like that and there we go so something big um, you know we could actually go and create a large exposed pad back here or even just widen this pad up we could definitely do that um, and I'm t I was, I've always been tempted to do that kind of thing as well because it's just a, a known path you can you know, if you go in and edit this part here this pad rather you actually have control over the different layers, which ones you want to show, which ones you don't want to show. Um, you can select them here like that. And that's actually really nice. I, I like that a lot. Uh, the thing I don't like is that, say you decide to, you know, say we'll, we'll, you know, we'll keep the same outlines we're showing here, right? So say we just make everything huge, right? Make this one by one. So you have a huge well, that's not a good example. We'd have to shift that up. But say you say you wanted a huge heat sink like this, right? And this is all exposed copper now. Um, that's great unless you can't fit this pad into a certain area. And so you really want to have flexibility there. So we're going to close this without saving it. <laughs> that was a mess. So what we're going to do is just show uh, an example here with a D squared pack, which is nice. It's already there. Okay, so say we wanted to draw a copper. Uh, maybe we should actually. Mm, let's see. I am going to quickly go into the schematics, and you'll see why in a second here. So let's go into this, and let's just load up a transistor. Uh, if we had a list all device NPN, we're just going to simply name these. So we're just going to name them with what they are. So base, emitter, collector, those kind of things. Oops, label, base, click, collector, click, and oops, label, emitter. Save, net list. It's going to ask us to annotate. Okay. Notice it doesn't give any errors actually for <laughs> not having anything actually hooked up, but that's okay. So we can close this out. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll save that. And now we're going to load in this net list. And hopefully, it re changes the names of all these things. Oh, we didn't associate it. Darn, 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 darn. Uh, we'll do this the easy way by going in here, footprint, and changing it to DPAC2. So it should just go and find that footprint. DPAC2. All right. Save. That list. Save. <laughs> Save. I think we're saved. Okay, let's see if that did it. I think it should have. Oh, oh man. Should have just done it the right way, Chris. What is this even called? Oh, I'm going to go over the T pack too. That's weird. All right, well, let's go to the CVPCB because we're going to do this right. Forcing my hand. So we go here. Is it called D? Oh man, off 
by one letter. That is lame. <laughs> All right, so save that. Go back here. I think they would spell it the same, but no comment. Uh, let's try reading that list one more time. Okay. Oh, and there it is. And of course, it did not uh, actually name those. Anywho, we'll be okay. Uh, so we're going to delete the module. Oh, probably because we need it to actually hook up. All right, one more time here. So let's just drop in resistors just to make everything hook up together. Uh, A, R, okay. Copy, R, copy. Wire, 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 and wire. Just to be safe, we'll label everything here as well. The same. Should not matter, but we'll make sure. Left. I'm immediately <laughs> regretting all this, but gotta do it right. Things we do for heat sinks. All right, save. It's gonna ask us to annotate once again. Save this, annotate. Okay, close, close. Oh, actually don't annotate yet because we wanna put these as footprints, SM0603. Edit, front footprint, SM0603. Save, netlist, 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 yes, save. <laughs> and we're good to go. All right, one more time. Now I'm gonna read the netlist. See if we actually get nets that we want. Ah, oh, look at that, okay. Oops. All it took was about five minutes. All right, so say we want to create a big heat sink for the base, um, which actually is not standard, but that's fine. We're just trying to draw a heat sink here. Okay, so we're going to actually draw a zone here. We already have a board outline. So we're going to draw a zone. It's going to ask us what layer we want it to be on. So we're going to say front side copper layer. We're going to say the net that we want it associated with. And then down here, we have corner smoothing, thermal relief, everything, uh, you know, all the usual thermal, uh, all the usual zone, copper zone outline properties. And what we're going to do is actually change this over to solid because we don't, we don't want the thermal relief. We actually want as much thermal transfer as we can get. So we're going to draw a copper pore right here. Okay. There we go. All right, so now if we right click, fill or refill, awesome. Now, this is great. Uh, however, the thing that's going to show if we just left it like this is we're going to see a big copper area underneath the solder mask. And then we're going to see this area, which is actually relieved because the footprint has solder mask relief right where this pad 2 is. So what we need to do is actually right click, we need to select our working layer, and then we need to switch to the front side mask, or if you're doing a backside pour, you have to do the backside mask. So front side mask. Okay, now it's going to ask, if we click, it's going to have a different zone property thing. I'm going to say front side mask, start drawing here. Okay. Alright, if we go over here, we can select to show or not show. 
add pink, and we can even right or center click, change it to something very different. So blue, red, well, red, blue, purple. All right, so that's good. So that means that this not only will this footprint have or this uh, pad two of the footprint have exposed copper, which we'll solder to. We'll also have all of this area. It'll have copper, and then it'll have the solder mask removed over top of that copper. We can verify this by hitting plot, plot. Uh, we got to go find these now. Okay. So if we go into um, Kaikan Launcher, we have Curb View. And now if we load up these files, we should be able to see the Gerbers we just created. And there we go. So this is the solder mask relief. That's the outline. And we were missing the copper. Oh, we didn't actually pour any other copper. So, <laughs> so yeah, we should be good to go. All right, that's all. That's how you do a exposed copper pour in KiCad. Thanks for watching.